Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the studio. So, today's the day. We're looking at tracks by Mihai Popovicio. What can I say? Mihai's awesome. He's one of my favorite producers. He's a lovely guy and I just, I love his sound. I've even had the pleasure of remixing one of his tracks from his first album on Bondage. He's quite varied and versatile in the music that he releases. Uh, some stuff is really kind of deep, minimal. Some of it's kind of deep house. Some of it's a bit more melodic and driving, but he really does have a signature characteristic to his sound. He's done albums on bondage music and poker flat, as well as a plethora of originals and remixes on labels including Cyclic, Dynamic, 8-Bit, loads really. I've actually tried to do this video a couple of times and I wasn't happy enough with the results to actually release it. But this time I think I cracked the code. <laughs> You have to let me know in the comments what you think. As always, if you want to get your hands on the project files, then there's a link in the description to download them from my Patreon. Patreon's one of the best ways that you can help support me and support the channel and make sure that I keep bringing you these videos. So jump over there, have a look. There's literally so many projects to download. It's getting a bit crazy. All right, well, enough of that. Let's jump into Ableton and make some beats. I just want to all right guys, so here we are inside Ableton and this is a project that I've put together in the style of Mihai Popovicio. As mentioned at the start, Mihai's pretty diverse in the sound that he does. He does stuff that's like really, really deep and minimal. And then some stuff that's a bit more techy, maybe melodic in the style of like Gorge, Nick Curley, Oliver Shorey's, that type of thing. Then some things are a bit more housey. You know, it's a broad scope. So I just had to kind of pick a lane and go with it. So hopefully this meets your expectations of what Mihai sounds like and what you're expecting from this video. But I think I've gotten it pretty close to his sound. So I am picky with this because he's one of my favorite artists. Enough said, let's just jump in and have a listen. Yeah. There we go. Hope you enjoyed that and hope you're looking forward to find out how I made it. So the BPM of this project is 123. When I was referencing Mihai's tracks, they range anywhere from like 122 up to maybe like 127, but generally in the kind of 123, 124, the more minimal stuff is a bit faster, the more kind of deeper stuff is a bit slower. So let's just jump right in with the drums. And what I've got here is a kick. This is literally sampled from one of Mihai's tracks. Nice, strong, solid kick, playing with a fundamental of G sharp. The track is in D sharp minor. So the kick is tuned to the key of the track, which I feel is important. Quick note though, I do, however, try to avoid having the kick playing on the root note of the track, as that just kind of messes things up with the bass often. You wanna have some separation, but you want them to be like, harmonically working together. Uh, I did have an alternative kick, which is here. I just felt this one was a bit nicer. So really not doing much to the kick at all. I might like to just roll off the very lowest sub. These pink parts here represent this little filter rack, which is just cutting out the low, cutting out the subs to create some breaks. Easy as that. 
So let's move on to the claps. So what I've got here is two claps grouped together with a little bit of reverb and compression. And what I'm using the compression for is just to kind of keep that clap really nice and tight and also to contain the tail of the reverb. So you get this nice reverby sound, but then it doesn't decay on too long. I like to do it that way because I feel like having too short of a reverb on claps sounds a bit unnatural. So this gives it more vibe, but keeps it short and snappy. So the first clap is just a sample here. Nice and short. I'm using the envelopes on the simpler just to keep it really nice and short. And then the next one is from a loop. And then I've got the clip gain here just letting through the clap so the rest of the loop is not playing. So I have actually used the rest of the loop in the hats. And this is something that's really handy to do when you're using loops is to separate them so that you have more control. So if I listen to this hat part here, Right, and then I've got the clap. I find that most of the time in top loops and things, claps are much too loud. So when you go to mix your track, especially if you're using another clap or layering it up in the mix, the claps just end up overpowering everything. So I always try to separate them so that I can have control over the balance. Now I've got a snare, which is just playing with the groove. Actually, sorry, I've got two snares. So let's just take a look at this one first, as it's a bit more traditional. And then this one. So that one's a bit more kind of brushy. What I've done there is I've found a snare that I felt had the right kind of sonics of what I was looking for. But you'll see here, if I take away this fade in, it's got a sharp attack. So with the fade in, it gives it this kind of more brushy vibe, right? So that's kind of helping with the groove, but also helping add some different texture into the loop. And then this one here is just a bit more of a standard analog drum machine style snare. Right, let's take a look at the hats. As I showed you, I've got this top loop, which is just adding some vibe. Then I've got this closed hat. Nice, snappy, sharp transient, which is really kind of creating some impact. I noticed when referencing a bunch of Mihai's tracks that the hats are generally very tight and there might be like an open hat or a ride that's a bit longer. But for the most part, the hats and shakers and everything are pretty tight, especially the ones that are louder. Then we've got this hat groove, which is just a couple of different hats and a shaker. So here's the MIDI. On this little tight hat, what I've done is I've used the sustain at full and then a short release. And then that allows me to use the, mid, the length of the MIDI note to dictate how long the hat will be. Oh, I should have that decay down there. So you can hear that lets me have those really tight little hats at the, at the start of the beat. Uh, then I've got this shaker in there, which is just a very simple, just one hit in the loop. And it's just kind of giving some groove and adding another texture. Then I've got this tight hat and I've just used the fade out to make that even shorter. Nice, interesting groove, but not too chaotic. You know, there's, there's like, a lot of texture, a lot of attitude, but not too much that you can't kind of focus on one element. Then we've got this open hat. So I've just taken this from a loop, something that I do a lot when I'm writing myself. Uh, I really like the simplicity and the, the speed of using loops, but I tend to use them more for like one hits. So what I'll be doing is looking for an open hat, as I was in this case. I'll audition a bunch of loops, and then I'll go through and put that into a simpler and just use a one shot. You can hear there's an, also like a, there's like another little tambourine or something in the background. So it kind of gives it another layer of complexity. Okay, then in the percussion, I've just got a loop here from my sample pack. Link up here if you want to buy that. Best selling sample pack on houseofloop.com. So I've got Tantra here. This is adding the kind of glitchiness to it. Tantra 
2 is available now, I will not be upgrading. <laughs> the, I really don't like the new interface and they've literally doubled the price, which is a bit of a shame because it's such a cool tool. But if you didn't get version 1, probably still worth it because I'm not really familiar with anything else that does exactly the same thing. Maybe Sigmund from D16 would be another alternative. Anyway, I digress. Then using this EQ after the Tantra to just take out some of the high frequencies and some of the low frequencies. This is really supposed to be a percussion texture and I don't want it to interfere too much with the hats up here or with the kind of kick and stuff down here. So all the drums with the kick. Oh. This percussion loop should come back in over here. There we go. So moving on to the bass, what we've got here is a bass line and an acid pluck. So let's take a look at the bass line first. Here's the MIDI, so funky little groove. So you'll notice that there's no bass notes happening here and that's leaving space for this acid pluck. And together with the kick. So you'll notice that this bass has got quite a bit of mid range and quite a bit of distortion. It's got like, it's pretty audible. So let's have a look at how I made it. The synthesis is in wavetable. Let me just take off this oscillator. I've got a sub. which is already doing quite a bit of the sound. Take that filter off. And this kind of fizziness is being added by the tone here. So you can kind of fine tune that to how you like. Somewhere between 70 and 100 is pretty nice. All right, so then we've got this filter, which is very tight. It's got quite a bit of resonance, which is giving it this bite and this like bomb bomb sound to it. So if I take that down. And it's a 24 dB filter. So this means that when it's pulled in, it's not letting through much of the uh, high frequencies. But then the envelope, which I've got here, envelope two modulating, is allowing it to kind of let through some of those frequencies. But then the filter modulation on envelope two, here I've got it set to 30%, and that then allows it to let through some of those high frequencies. We can see here that this is a very tight, plucky envelope. So that's what's helping to give it a lot of that pluck and bite. So I'll turn back on oscillator one, it's just a sawtooth. And I've got this set to mono with some glide turned on. So that means that the pitch of the note is kind of dragging between each note. So if I turn that off, So you can hear there, it's quite subtle, but the kind of the pitch just kind of slides between each note. And this is really handy when you're playing a riff that's going over quite a few notes like this. It can give it a real cool vibe. Uh, then I've got some unison, three voices. So without the unison. That means that there's three, uh, three voices playing at the same time and they're all slightly detuned and panned. And then to account for that. I'm using this utility because I want the sub to be in mono, right? So I've got this bass mono set up to 150 hertz. So that's just going to ensure that my sub is 100% mono. Then I'm just rolling off a little bit of the lowest sub frequencies and I'm controlling the dynamics a wee bit with this filter. And I've got my trusty LFO tool, which is doing the sidechain job. And then I've got this filter rack again, which is just being automated here to cut out the subs. So there's the automation for that. Let's take a look at this acid pluck. So the acid pluck here is in audio. 
So I've actually recorded that from my TD3. I'll just pop that on the screen here. Uh, super cheap little 303 knockoff from Behringer. Sounds really great. And it's just nice to have something that's like hands-on, especially for these kind of acid sounds. You can just kind of use two hands and control it. And what I've done here is just taken a longer take, just modifying the different parameters on the synth, recorded that, and then just used the audio. So that's a really fun way to work and use hardware, I find. What uh, One tip that I like to do is let me show you the envelope here. As these notes are happening on the 16th and the, I've got swing applied, I want to put this note onto the one. And this allows me to easily see if my audio is out of time in any way. And then if there are problems, I can use that note to rectify that. And then I'm just using the gain to cut that note out. So I've got a little bit of processing happening here. I'm just taking out the subs because I don't want them interfering with the bass. I'm just pulling down a little bit of this kind of 250 hertz, what is that, 240, just to take out a little bit of muddiness, and then I'm boosting up some of these upper mids just to help it cut through. So I normally use Decapitator from Sound Toys for distortion and things, but I wanted to use as many Ableton devices as possible in case you don't have Decapitator and you want to download the project, link in the description. So I went for the drum bus, which has some compression, some distortion, some saturation and, th and things built into it. And it's quite a full on uh, effect. So I've got it only using 39% of the wet signal. So it's, it's subtle when I'm, when I'm using it like this. But it really helps to kind of bring out some of the harmonics. Because of some of the automation that I've done, there's some inconsistencies in the volume. So I wanted to control these dynamics a wee bit, which is what I'm using this glue compressor for. Again, sidechain with the LFO tool. And then I'm using the free Tal Chorus LX to add a little bit of width. The TD3 is mono, so this just helps to kind of spread it out in the panorama. Then I'm sending it to a little bit of ping pong delay, which is this one here, and a bit of reverb, which is this one here. These are both standard for my template. I'll put a link to a video up there explaining my template if you want to go and check that out. So let's take a listen with everything else. So you can see that those two layers of bass really help to add some interest to the groove. Now let's move on to the melodic elements. So let's have a look at this chord delay first. This is probably the most complicated element in the track. The way that I got there is really just messing around, trying things randomly. What I'll do is I'll just take off the processing, which there's a lot of, as you can see. So this is what, it, oh, let's see the MIDI here. So just some D minor chords stacked up. It's like two D minor triads stacked over two octaves. And then I've also got this F here, which is in the scale, but that just helps to make it sound a bit more interesting. So it just gives it a little more dissonance. I'm using this randomization for the velocity so that each of those notes is a slightly different velocity each time that it's played, which is influencing the wavetable in this velocity column. So it's influencing the oscillator effects, the oscillator position, the amplification, the filter frequency, a whole bunch of things. So this is just a preset that comes with Ableton. And I think that all I've done is just tweak these um, filter frequencies a little bit so that it kind of had the harmonics that I wanted. This is something that I'll do when I've got a sound in mind that I want, but I'm not quite sure how to get there. I'll find a preset that is in the ballpark and then just kind of mess around with it and tweak it. So let's have a look at this extensive processing. First up, we've got a vocoder. So all the oscillators were being used in the synth, but I wanted some noise as well. So I just used this vocoder set to the carrier to noise to add some noise on top. It'd be fantastic if Ableton added a noise oscillator to that synth, because I think that's probably its only real shortcoming. So I just tweaked the release so that it fit with the sound. And then I'm using these two Max for Live LFOs. First one, I've got set to the dry, dry wet. And then the next one I've got set to the formant. So let's listen to the dry wet. 
So that just means it's some randomization for the amount of noise that's going to be on each hit. Now the formant controls like how high or low the noise sounds. So let's have a listen to that. See if you can hear it. So it's subtle, but what I'm really trying to get here is some movement and some randomization so that each time the synth plays, it sounds a bit different. Next up, we're going into a delay, and this is set to quarter notes. This is just helping the sound to extend on for a bit longer. I want it to be like a dubby texture in the background. Next up, I've got this auto filter and I'm using the LFO on the filter that is sweeping up and down basically at this rate of 0.24 Hertz. You can't see the sweep like you can on some of the live devices. It would be fantastic if they implemented that as I think that visualization is really helpful. So we just have to imagine it by listening. So let's have a listen. So we're really getting some movement and some change in there from each hit to from one hit to the other. Now I'm just rolling off all the subs. I don't need them for this sound. I've got an echo here. I don't think that glue compressor is being used. And the echo, I've got it set to 16th notes, ping pong, a bit of reverb, quite high dry wet, and quite a high feedback at 83%. So I'm using the delay offset. The right is plus 1%, the left is minus 1%. And what this does is each time that the delay plays, it shifts more and more out of time by 1%. So this helps it to sound kind of really organic and a bit kind of trippy as it, get, as it extends on. So this is really giving that dubby vibe that I'm after. Now, next up, I've got this harmonic resonator from Ableton. This is new in Live 11, and it's one of my favorite devices in Live now. I just love it for sound design in a kind of really random way. So I just literally scrolled through some of the presets, and this dripping grains sounds fantastic on here. So it's really subtle, but you can just hear, especially in the sides, there's this kind of granular glitchiness that is just added. It's very subtle, but it really helps to add a whole other dimension to the sound. Then of course, we're side chaining that to the kick. So let's have a listen to the sound in context. I'll just take the bass out for a minute. So it is quite a subtle sound, it's very low in the mix, and it's supposed to be more like a kind of texture in the background. The way that I got there is basically like having an idea in mind of what I wanted to create, and then literally trial and error. Just throw some things at it and see what comes out. And I find doing this is just like a really fun, creative way to produce. All right, next up we've got these chord stabs. So let's have a look at the MIDI here. So it's just playing the root note of D sharp and then the G sharp on top. And then this last longer note is extended out, but we take away the G sharp. So this is how it sounds. You can see here I've tried it with the F sharp. The reason I've taken this off is just to provide some differentiation so that it kind of feels like it's evolving a little bit. So this sounds a little bit different to these. And it's just for this kind of sonic texture. You can hear there that it's being filtered and it sounds a bit different here. So I'm using this auto filter to just let in the high frequencies gradually. So let's listen to it around here and I'll just take off the processing and we can have a look at the synthesis. Again, wavetable, my trusty old add some random preset, just set to six, so it's very subtle this time. Just helps to make every hit a little bit different, give it a bit more of a humanized feel. So I've taken the first oscillator and added this vintage dual saw patch. I'll just turn off the second oscillator for now. Then I'm using a 12 dB filter to cut out some of the high harmonics, and then that's being modulated with envelope two. I'll just open this up. 
and then we can see that the velocity is influencing the filter frequency and the amplification so that means that when it's a higher velocity it's going to be louder and brighter and the converse when it's a lower velocity then i'm using lfo1 and lfo2 i've got the retrigger turned off so that they're just constantly cycling so that their position is going to be completely random i'm using those to influence the wavetable position so if we look at this when they're playing So we can see there that the wavetable position is slightly different each time, and that's just going to give each synth note a slightly different sound, adding to the humanization. I've also got a little bit of LFO2, which is assigned to filter frequency, and this is just adding a bit more randomness into the mix so that each of those hits is different. Because we're playing a chord, we've got it in polyphonic mode, and then I've got the unison turned on and set to shimmer. So if I play it with none, I play it with classic, similar to how it was on the bass, and then shimmer. It's just, it's a little bit more vibrato-ish. I forgot to mention, oscillator 2 is just a noise wavetable. All right, so let's have a look at the processing. First up, we've got a chorus, tell chorus LX again. One of my favorite free plugins, saturator with a bit warmer preset. Just adding a bit of like nice harmonics to the upper mids. Glue compressor to control the dynamics. And then a delay. And we can just see here that the feedback is being automated. So you can hear as we play that some automation that's happening and this is just being sent to a massive reverb and that's just part of my template and it's this reverb here. So that just goes on, it's crazy long, 60 seconds and that's just really good for like build ups. I'll just, I'll send like a synth, a vocal, drums, etc. and it just creates the same effect as like a white noise riser or something like that. But the source for it is the elements in your track so it sounds like a lot more cohesive and natural. Next element is this dub pad. This is just a sample. Let me turn off this stuff. Nothing wrong with using samples, but the downside is that they're static. Every time you play it, it sounds the same, which is why I've got this LFO here, which is modulating the filter frequency so that each time it plays, it's going to be sound slightly different. I've got the resonance turned up quite high, which is going to emphasize this filter frequency change. So that adds a really nice character to the sound. Next up, I've got some overdrive, and this is just helping to add some saturation. really just brings up some of those harmonics. A glue compressor to control the dynamics. Cutting out the subs. LFO tool to sidechain it. An echo, this is gonna give me the dubby vibe that I'm after. It just helps it to kind of decay on and sound a bit more deep and dubby. And then I've got this Redux set to 8-bit at 50%, and this is just giving it a bit crushed kind of old sampler type feel. Gives it that noisy kind of space in the sides. So in context with the track. Really helps to set the mood and give a, give a deep vibe to the track. Then we've got our trusty high string in the break. This is one that I've sampled from a piece of hardware. You can hear that it's got some slight detuning in it, which helps give it like this kind of real dissonant, creepy vibe, which I really like. You can see it's in D minor, and I've just tuned it down to semitones so that it's at C. This means that it's going to correlate to the keys that I press on the keyboard or that I write in the MIDI clip. In this case, D sharp. And you'll notice that instead of playing at D sharp three, I've pitched it down to D sharp two. 
So this has the effect of pitching the sample down and it means it's actually playing slower so that this detuned sound is more accentuated. Then I'm just cutting out the lows and believe it or not, I'm side chaining it. Let's take a look at the vocals. So I just trawled through some stuff on Splice and came up with these two little vocals. So strong. This had the effects already on the sample. If I'm writing music that I'm going to release, I will generally try and find a dry version of the sample and put my own effects on it. Just kind of make it a bit more unique as, you know, anyone can get their hands on samples from Splice and things. You see I'm using this delay here in the break, the dry wet is being automated. So let's take a listen to that. So I'm also sending it to a bit of ping pong delay. So the delay is set to 16th notes and then I've set the delay offset to 1.6 each side, which means that as it goes, it's getting more and more spread out and the feedback is really high. So it's giving it this kind of really stuttered, really cool effect, I feel like. I've cut away a bit of the highs using the filter on the delay, and this is just to separate the delay from the original source. So now I've got this other vocal, which says two of us. It's taken from a longer phrase, but I've just used the clip gain to take out the end part as I didn't need it. I'm just literally using the gain on this EQ to ramp it up. So this is just more of a repetitive kind of groove type thing. The two of us. The two of us. I've got a bit of glue compression. No, it's not doing anything. So let's delete it. Uh, I've got LFO, which is giving it that sidechain pump. I'm sending it to a little bit of reverb and a little bit of ping pong. So this is just kind of building up in the break. That's the vocals. Onto the effects, a bit lonely here. We've got this noise crash, which is basically, I've taken like a long white noise sound, then I'm playing it with a MIDI. I'm just using the envelopes on the simpler to control how much of this is coming through because I didn't want it to be like a big washy sound. I want it to be a bit more like a crash. And then I've got this delay, which is just helping to give it a bit more vibe. So without the delay and with the delay, Now this is very minimal effects. There could be some more, but oftentimes, especially like mini breaks in Mihai's tracks, will have like literally zero effects. Maybe a little bit of delay on something. But when I was referencing, I noticed that stuff was really dry like this. It were, there weren't a lot of like effect samples, rises and noises and that kind of thing. It was using automation or very, very stripped back, very few effect sounds. So that's what I've done. In terms of the arrangement, I mean, obviously this is a stripped down arrangement, but what I've done is kind of introduced the elements slowly. I'm automating in this kind of main synth. So after this little mini break, it comes in. Then also this vocal comes in in the break, a string comes in in the break to add some tension, a bunch of the hats and things slowly start coming out. I've cut away the subs on the kick, and then later on I'm cutting away the subs on the bass. So I'm slowly cutting away more and more and more. As this is coming up in frequency, I'm building up this kind of washiness with the reverb send, and then at the end we do the delay with the vocal. You can hear having this little break here, this little pause creates like this kind of anticipation and this so strong vocal is being kind of delayed on. So it gives it a bit of vibe and a bit more kind of eeriness and then it drops back in with the kick. And it's actually 
We've, we've brought back the hats and things, but we've stripped away some of the melodic elements so that they can be added back later. And this kind of like building up the number of elements and then pulling them away again is a constant and kind of like the foundation of the arrangement in these type of tracks. If you want to grab the project, there's a link in the description to my Patreon where you can download this project and the projects from all of my videos. I think doing that is like a really strong way to solidify the learning, watching along with the videos and then going in and seeing how I've done some of the things. I just want to believe. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. This was super fun to make. I'm a massive, massive fan of Mihai's style. I love his music. I'm always playing his tracks in my DJ sets. He's such a prolific and talented producer. It's just, just Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite track from Mihai? If you like this video, but you want to see more, then check out this video I did on Archie Hamilton and Tommen's style of deep minimal house. All right, guys, that's it from me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace. I just want to